All right, so now we're back with another E video. So we're trying to figure out what to do. So we're just going to do some agent missions. We're probably gonna just do some courier missions. Uh, just cause they're gonna be really quick and easy to do and you won't have to worry about combat. So maybe we'll just go for our skill tree. So we were doing a whole bunch of things while the video was rendering. So we uh, really, fil uh, really went through our skill tree and we focused everything. So we removed everything. So we had a whole bunch of things before, right? We were doing hull upgrades and shield upgrades and shield operation. We were also training, like uh, targeting. We we're training all these random things. Also training some random things over here, I think. So. Um, so what I'm saying is you're going to be looking at all these skills and you're going to be throwing them onto your training queue and then your training queue is going to go up to like 10 days or 20 days and then you're going to have a whole bunch of skills you're not going to even have it used for. So I think we're pretty much done mining here. We just usually uh, mine while the video is rendering so there's nothing to do and then it doesn't really make progress. So we're just going to go click on personal assets, right click here, jump through the Stargate. Then we could set the destination because this is our home system. We know that we figured out how to do that before. <clears throat> so for the training queue, we just uh, got the Kaltari Cruiser. So we're going to let that train completely today. And then we're going to change from uh, ship training. Because basically all we've been training is ships, right? We just got social a little bit so that our standings go up uh, after we complete missions. Got the forget the destroyer we got the cruiser and then a shield operation just so that we could use the shield booster essentially and then the Kaldari cruiser and then the missile launcher operation and light missiles so that we could uh, actually use missile launchers on our ships and then we're just going to work on missiles for the next day so basically ship training is done for now now we're doing missile training so our uh, missile weapons are gonna just be a lot more improved. So what do all these missile things? So a rapid launch improves the rate that your launchers fire. So 3% uh, attack speed, 3% attack speed for level. Target navigation, 10% decreased uh, level and factor for target's velocity. So that's basically kind of like 10% damage. And then the missile bombardment, 10% bonus to maximum flight time. So the distance that they can fly, so the optimum range, right? Your guns, you would say the range is 10,000 with this skill. Docking request accepted. Yeah, their uh, range would go up by 10%, so it's a really good one. It's uh, how far away you can attack the enemies. And the other missile, one that we're training, missile projection, 10% bonus to maximum velocity. Oh, so both of these do the same thing. Both of them essentially increase the uh, range that you can attack enemies from. So we've only been working on missiles and during the video we also bought a bunch of things so if you go to the wallet here market transactions so we bought uh we were buying skill books right to go to the regional market we know that um all these skill books if we change the filters yeah it's just a range filter so everything in the station if we go to skill books all these skill books are being sold by the vendors inside the station so we just went through here because we're uh, looking at our skill tree actually because we're looking at our uh, production and we're thinking uh, what if we do industry and then uh, advanced industry because we had uh, all these skills shown and then we we're starting to put these on our queue we we're starting to put uh science things on our queue and then our resource processing so out there mining so much we were putting mining on our queue but then we stopped ourselves we're like uh the only really thing you need in this game is combat we don't need other things, so we're just going to be doing missiles. And then once the missiles are trained, we could uh, actually work on our ship's uh, defenses. So we're just going to be running missiles, or running missions. As soon as uh, our ship's good enough to go, we could just start running missions. But we're going to be doing uh, other missions. So these skills I bought was mining upgrades. So here's the price. So you can see the skills, they aren't too expensive, although they do add up. And I believe these are 500,000 ones. These are members only scales, right? So, yeah, alpha scale. So, if you were a free player, you can't learn these skills. They're just uh, skills for basically researching things 5% uh, to blueprint manufacturing time research per level. Show inferiority um, allows one additional research job. Then, metallurgy just does 5% um, bonus to material efficiency research speed. 
So sure, remember ones. Maybe missile projection. Oh no, that's free to play. And then we just bought all the missile missile skills. So you just go to the marketplace and then you just go buy them from here, right? If you want to go to missile skills, then you just buy the missile skills if you can afford. I think if you click on the actual missiles, it would just show all of them. Yeah, but we, what we did is we just uh, went to the missiles tree and then we just uh, pretty much uh, looked to see what we could get. All skills, what we had the prerequisites for, and then we got all the ones we thought were important. So later we're going to have to research other things, but for now we're just going to do missions. I think we're going to do missions in the Heron probably. Uh, yeah, not the adventure. We were just mining, so we just got a whole bunch more ore, so we got another 7,000, 700,000 ISK. So then we could change these ships. We have the Heron, so that's a good uh, frigate. It flies really fast, it has good cargo capacity. Because the Comrade, it's, the, it's, uh, it's a better ship for combat, but it's not a good ship for transporting. So if you look at the attributes, I would say. 391 5 and if we go to the this one 391 5 seconds 391 oh, oh. should we go uh, show info 391 5 seconds so it's not too much different I guess hmm. but anyways we're just gonna use the hair and just test mess up uh, what's the cargo capacity it's a cargo capacity on this thing. <laughs> We're just gonna look at these ships a little bit. There's so many ships in the game, right? And then you can know, can see what they do. So we just double click it, it should, oh, capacity 425. So we basically hold the same amount, I guess. So you could use this for transporting different things, for doing the delivery missions. So if you go to the ship's cannon, it has a, 304 but that's just because it has the speed accelerators on it which uh, reduces its uh, cargo capacity yeah but we'll leave the combat ship at home we'll just take the hair and it is a little bit better it did align faster it did have uh, more spots for more of these things oh it's not even fitted that was just the base stats on it all right cool so let's uh, fit the hair in for doing delivery missions. So we just wanted to put uh, override injectors on it. Uh, and then the afterburner maybe. Oh, we're not gonna be, not gonna be out using the afterburner for anything. So we don't even really need any weapons or anything. All we need is a uh, cargo space. Well, I guess this override thing uh, reduces cargo space. So let's go to the market. Let's see if there is a item to buy. I N E R T I. See if there's inertial stabilizers. Oh, and we can use them. What's the requirement to use them? Hall upgrades to mechanics one. Okay, so you could buy inertia stabilizers right away. It's just that they cost uh, 1 million gold. And the level 1 ones are like 4 jumps away, so I guess we won't even worry about the inertia stabilizer. These things will be good as long as we have enough cargo hold. And then they gave us a uh, expanded cargo hold things. So we can actually bring two of the hold. Oh, no, don't drag everything. So if you wanted to split an item, you just hold shift and then you drag the expanded cargo hold. And then you say, how, what stack size did you want? And then it splits it into a stack size of two. And we just bring that inside our ship. So let's just see if there's any of uh, these on the marketplace. So if we had more money, it's just the scales are so expensive, right? Yeah, so we could buy some of these at the station. Just make sure you sort it by price. Make sure you're not buying buying an expensive one. And this is basically just the fit for delivering delivering things. So there we go. We just got some speed accelerators, and then we just got the expanded cargo hold, and then we just got the afterburner if we don't need it. So we won't actually need that for anything. All we need is just uh, <laughs> this overdrive things and then cargo hold expander. There's your delivery ship. Perfect. So now, how do you find agents to deliver for? Uh, you have to go to the agency on the left-hand side here. Then you go 
will be at the home. This is where it would start. So then you'd uh, click on the agents and missions on the top left here. And then you go mission agents. And then we want to go distribution agents. So security agents, they're going to send you into combat. Um, you're not going to be too efficient in them. Distribution agents, they just send you from station to station delivering, delivering goods. Mining agents, they tell you to go mine, but you're so terrible at mining, uh, it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> R&D agents, those are probably later locator agents, those are later too, so we'll just go with distribution agents. You could easily do the level 1 and the level 2 missions. So you could go here, you could sort, we it by any level. We're just looking for, oh, we could run level 3 missions for anyone in the Science and Trade Institute, right? So there are six jumps away, any distance, Calgary State. So usually this says any faction as well. We'll just uh, set it back to how it normally is. Any level. I believe this is how it normally is. Highest available. So then if we try to set it to um, highest agent level, if we set agent level to level three, you notice we can do missions for the Science and Trade Institute. That's because our standings is high enough with those. But if we try to do level three missions for any other corporation, we can't actually do them for the corporation. Let's so look at the standings here. We can see our standings aren't really uh, too good for anybody, except they are good for Science and Trade Institutes. So these are the missions that you have been running for the entire time. The corporation, the Science and Trade Institute, right? This is where you did your career missions. So basically, since you've been running all these missions for these people, your uh, standings with the Science and Trade Institute is really, really high. It's already 3.9. You could already run with level 3 missions. And then if you got this up to level 5, you could actually run level 4 missions right out of the boat. So that'd be really good. <laughs> uh, so there we go. So we're just going to be looking for the Kaldari Navy, probably. So we go highest available. And then we could go faction, and then we go to Kaldari State, and then we go to Corporation, and then we go to Kaldari Navy, and then we click on that. And then we could see all the Kaldari Navy agents here. There's some uh, five jumps away, so if we go to location, any distance, uh, within two jumps, there's no Kaldari Navy here. We go within five jumps. So there's two of them over here, they're in the same system. So might as well go over there, right? Five jumps away. We could always find our home system. We just go left to the personal assets here. And then all of our assets are in the Science and Trade Institute. So if we wanted to come back here, we just set the destination and then we could always come back home. So don't worry about leaving this place. You'll always be able to find your way back. And then we're gonna be able to do uh, higher level missions, maybe closer to home or something. But uh, for now, we're actually leaving home. We're leaving home for a long while. We're not gonna be back for quite a bit. So we undock from the station. And it was five jumps away. Right, because we'll just open the agent's window here as we warp. So we just left click on the thing and then we jump through the stargate to start warping towards the place. So in the agency, all we did was a uh, right click where they were. Oh. Distribution agents, highest available, then five jumps, Calgary State, Calgary Navy. So why is the Calgary construction so there we go. Yes, and then we just uh, right click this, and then we say set destination, and that'll bring you to this agent that you're trying to find. And you could even uh, show information, Calgary Navy. So we haven't dealt with the Calgary, Calgary Navy, although, Jidda, the main trade hub, is actually owned by Kaldari Navy, so the main reason to get Kaldari Navy up first is because um, that's where everybody trades, so getting your standings up with these people will reduce your broker's fee, so when you buy and sell items in Jidda, you won't have to pay as many fees. Then also for reprocessing, if you reprocess any, reprocess any ore in a station that you have a better standing with, uh, the tax will be lower, so there's lower, lower fees when buying and selling stuff on the market with them, and there's lower uh, reprocessing taxes when you're reprocessing items. 
So if you were in a station owned by Science and Trade Institute, they'd give you the lowest lowest fees when buying and selling in their stations, and they'd give you the uh, lowest fees when reprocessing asteroids. Then Kaldari Constructions, they'd just give you the basic fee because you don't have any reputation with them. So if you get your reputation up with them, then if you're ever in their stations buying and selling stuff and reprocessing minerals, then uh, they will also give you a discount. So that's why you want to get all of the corporations up. So it doesn't matter where you are in space. If you're reprocessing something, you'll always have a good station. Although I guess uh, player-owned reprocessing stations do get better benefits. Although player-owned stations probably don't get better benefits for brokerage fees when buying and selling items. <laughs> Never thought about that. So maybe we'll just warp to the location and then we'll accept our first mission. So considering that uh, you're far away from home, right? You don't know where you are anymore. You're teleporting five, five teleports away, far away from your home system. Uh, nobody's giving you any directions anymore, right? You don't have Ara here telling you what to do. You don't have any career agents uh, giving you advice on what to do or giving you items. Now you're all by yourself in space with uh, nobody to help you. Just <laughs> anybody could come by and just uh, destroy your ship at any second and then you lose absolutely everything. Except that probably won't happen because your ship is not worth anything. We're not uh, carrying anything worth anything. And we're in high security space, so we're actually 100% safe here. Just don't have to worry about losing any of your ships. So if we look at the info, or all the info of our ship, the attributes, because we have the overdrive things, our maximum velocity went up a lot, 471. Maybe not a lot. So you can see how quickly the heron warps between gates. Well, I guess you'll especially notice it later when you're flying bigger ships. I guess the industrial ship warps at the same speed, it just aligns a lot sooner. You're just going to need to fit the industrial ship. Eventually, if you're trying to do a level 3 and level 4 distribution, distribution uh, missions. So now we can just go dock at the station. Then we arrived here. Or not even close to where we started. We don't even know where we are in the galaxy. We're in some place. So we have arrived the Caldari Navy assembly plant. So it was the closest one to our home system. So we just came here because uh, we're looking for this corporation specifically and then later we could look for other corporations as well. But for those ones, we won't have to start at level 1 missions. We'll probably be able to start them at level 3 or 4 missions and then just uh, boost up the corporation standings considerably. So now we arrived, let's uh, see how long the video is and then we'll probably accept this mission and then start running distribution message, uh, missions for the Caldari Navy. Alright, so now let's run some missions, although there are some things to point out, right? Because if you go to the inventory now, if you go to the item hanger, uh, there's nothing here because uh, every every single station has its own item hanger. So all of your items, they're in the other station, right? If you go to personal assets, all of your items are five jumps away. So all of your items are in the other station. They're not even here. None of your ships are here. And if you look here, you have an item in this station. The only item in this station is your ship itself. Yep, so every single station has its own inventory, essentially. And uh, everything was left behind, so you didn't bring anything with you. The only thing you have is your expanded cargo hold and your ship, and then your uh, two fittings. You don't even have any weapons or shields or anything. Uh, but you don't really need them. So then, now we're in the Caldera Navy station. So you get to talk to the agent, you go talk to her. Ah, uh, the DO. So she just wants you to deliver some cargo. So it's usually not too far for level 1 agents, right? She just wants you to go two jumps away, she'll reward you with some ISK and some loyalty points. So if you finish it within 54 minutes, 
so you could accept that at 320 so we just have to change our fitting we could hold hold a whole bunch if we go to our fitting if we go to our inventory so we could see our fitting is down here the amount that we could carry is 289 we need uh, 320 to be able to carry this, so we can fix that by taking the override injector, because the override injector um, also reduces our cargo capacity. So now we can carry it, right? 340, 320. So we still have one override injector to increase our speed. If the expanded cargo hold, doesn't this uh, lower our speed, or does it just uh, cargo capacity plus that maximum velocity? All right. It's the expanded cargo hold it uh, lowers your speed so you don't want to you don't want to equip two of these you're going to be warping slower you're going to be well you're going to be aligning slower so here's the fit we got her one cargo she just wants us to deliver it two jumps away so we can go deliver it two jumps away and our effective standing is 0 0.8 because um our standing with the caldari navy is 0 0.8 Oh, and then if we even learn uh, connections, we could even get it sooner. So maybe we should learn connections. I think we did buy connections. Well, not on video. We bought it off of video. But if you go into the social scale here, there is connections. So connections, 4% um, modifier to effective standing from friendly NPC corporations and factions. So considering that's pretty important, I guess. So you just right click it. You go view market details. And you just uh, buy it on one of these stations. You could buy it in the home station, right? Your starting station, the place where you live. Or you could buy it in uh, pretty much any station around here. These are all sold by uh, sold by vendors inside these stations. So they're not sold by players. So anywhere you can find these, you just go buy it for 200,000 ISK. And then you'll pretty much have that. So connections, let's uh, train connections, let's try to train connections right away instead of ships, I guess. Ships can wait. We can train uh, connections up to level 2, and then level 3 would take like 11 hours to train it, right? <laughs> but it would probably help out. So before we train uh, ships, before we train missile launchers, let's train connections up for today. So we know that uh, tomorrow, connections will be trained up pretty much uh, as much as they can for a good uh, cost anyways. And then also these other skills, we got them, so we'll just train them. We'll just uh, train our standings up today. So we go diplomacy, helps you de-escalate. So if any uh, standings are in the negative, so we could warp here, we could go dock at the station. Oh, it's the same thing. Yes, if you go to interactions, if you go to your standings, if any of them are in negative, like the Galante Federation, they're actually one of the main federations, so you don't actually want negative federation with them. That's why That's why we could actually work with one of their corporations inside uh, Kaldari Space, probably. I know of one. And if we just get a, a reputation with their corporation up, we could just run Galante missions, essentially in Kaldari Space. So it's just the five storyline missions that we did. Storylines, they'll give you a huge positive impact for one faction, then a huge negative impact for another faction. Usually half as much, right? Called Ari State 0.3, they were positively impacted by what we did over there for the uh, missions with all of the career agents at that one station. So Called Ari was really happy they gave us 0.83, but then Galante Federation, they were not happy. They gave us negative 0 0.42. So, <laughs> so it seems to be about half. So if you juggle between the factions, because Amar, they did like you did, because they're the allies of Kaldari. So generally, if you do something for Kaldari for a really, really important mission, Amar will like you 50% more, oh, half as much. So their reputation goes up with you. And then Galante is your worst enemy of the Kaldari. So anything you do for Kaldari, Galante is going to absolutely hate that. And then Minamatar is uh, allies of Galante, so anything you do for the Kaldari state, Minamatar will not like it, but uh, they won't like it as much because it doesn't affect them directly. It does affect their allies, so they got negative standings because of the five storyline missions. And then the pirates are already starting to hate us. So all these uh, negative standings, if you go to skills, 
If you start training a uh, diplomacy, right? 4% modifier to effective standing towards hostile agents. So we could train connections, and then we could train diplomacy. So maybe that would be a good thing to train today, diplomacy. And then these will be trained tomorrow. And then, uh, still, we're not going to be doing combat for a little bit, I guess. Then, uh, negotiation, 5% additional pay per skill level for agent missions. So, we'll put that, uh, in between connections and diplomacy. So we know that, uh, tomorrow, we're going to have a better effective standing with all the agents. And they're going to pay us some more money when we do missions for them. And uh, all the agents that hate us, they're actually going to like us a little bit more. And then maybe even criminal connections. We'll just get all of them, right? We bought these from the market just the same way we did before. You just right click it and then you buy from the marketplace and then you buy all of these criminal connections. We'll just train it to two, I guess, because it's not as important. So now we got our social skills training to level three. We still have to do our missiles, now we have three days on the queue, except uh, everything on the queue, it actually has a purpose now, everything has a purpose, so we're definitely going to be using the missile launchers later. So now, <clears throat> we accepted our mission, we docked at the station, so we complete the mission, and then uh, we're done the job, so now we can go to the pickup location, set the destination, undock, then we just uh, go back to her. Then we can see what the standings increase was, right? We go to interactions. So this would be the first time we have interacted with the Kaldar Navy and with this agent. So their standings should change with us. Yeah, the Kaldar Navy is 0.01. So the Kaldari Navy, Kaldari Navy liked what we did for that agent, what, they, uh, what we did for their corporation. And the agent, so she was a zero before, now she's 0 0.14. So, Kalari Navy, it's gonna go up a little bit slower, but uh, eventually you'll get better missions. It's just because we're doing level one missions. Once we get our reputation up to level two for the Kaldari Navy, which will happen pretty quickly for training the connection skill, right? Because in, uh, yeah, in 20 minutes, it's already gonna go up 0 0.4, because that's how that works. If her reputation is... Uh, jump through the Stargate. So if their reputation is like a 0, it'd be a 0 0.4 for the first level. Then be 0 0.8. Then it'd be a 1.2. And then a 1.6. Then eventually 2.0 if you get 5. If you get level 5 in this skill. So we're just going to be running uh, running delivery missions for Kaldari Navy to get our standings up, essentially. And there's even uh, other agents here too, right? If you get your standings up with her and you don't want to run with her anymore, there is another agent in the system. And then when we get to level 2, just start running level 2 missions, because those are going to give you better rewards. Like in terms of uh, standings and income and everything. So we talk at the station, and then if you want to find the agents, right, you just go to the agency on the left-hand side, and then uh, like we'll go back at home, agents and missions here, and then mission agents, yeah, and then uh, distribution, mining, you could look into all of them, but security agents, they're not too bad, you, could, you can do level 1 security agents, they're pretty good, level 2 security agents, they're too difficult, you need a better ship, your Kamarat wall, your Kamarat will get destroyed in level 2 missions, basically you won't be able to finish level 2 missions yet. <laughs> so level 2 distribution missions you can finish, and level 3 distribution missions, and level 4 distribution missions you can finish. So once we talk up at the station, we just talk to her again and accept her new mission. So it's just another delivery mission. So we just uh, set the destination to the drop-off location, then we go to the inventory. Item hanger, and then we just put the cargo inside our ship's inventory. Now we're holding it. Now we undock, and then we just go deliver the cargo. And then we just do this for a little bit. After uh, 16 missions, you'll get a storyline mission as well, so it does break up the monotony. It is just a whole bunch of flying around. That's alright, but uh, eventually, once you get the higher standings, uh, you'll be doing uh, less flying around. Yeah, just the beginning of the game. Once you get your character built up, then you'll be doing a lot better.
So it's just basically one week of uh, getting your character built up, and then when your character is built up, then there's even more you can do. But up until that point, there still is a lot more because we could still we haven't done planetary interaction, right? You could right-click on the planet, you could show info, you could even uh, look at it or something. You could uh, you could actually warp to it, right? Warp to the planet, and then you could uh, fly around the planet and, and fly around the moons and everything. So all the planets, you actually can warp to them and then fly to them and then fly around them. That's really interesting, right? So here, let's see, this planet is here. It's uh, warped to within zero kilometers. So we'll just do a little detour for the video because there's so many other things to do in this game besides uh, get a big, huge ship worth the billions of ISK and uh, do industry and make billions of ISK. You can fly around to the planets and you can go to them and then uh, planetary interaction. So, we won't look at that window yet, but essentially, you can go to the planets and explore them. Yeah, so we can just continue our way, jump through the Stargate, so we'll just do uh, delivery missions for a bit, and depending how long the video is, maybe we'll, maybe the next video will be after we have two standing with them or something, because the video is probably already super long. Alright, here, just one little clip, because it's silly, because I didn't actually hand in the quest, I didn't turn it in, so now if you go talk to her, Ah, uh, she was happy. So mission completed. Did we do two delivery missions for her? Maybe we did. Maybe we did do two missions this episode. So that was the reward for the last mission. This is the reward for the second mission then. And then same with the Kaldari Navy. I guess we did do two missions. So like that reward completed humble gift. Ah, uh, completed party goods. So there we go. Now it's up to 0 0.2 Kaldari Navy. She's up to... 0.27 so once you get up to 2 rating once we train connection and everything now we could actually undock and go return to the station so silly we didn't turn in the quest but there we go now we did now just go do courier missions until you get the two standings and then do level 2 courier missions for the called area navy jump through the stargate so now we can return oh and then i fly to the planets and then visit them and then look at the planets Look at the moons and everything. Yeah, there we go, now let's warp through space, let's go back home. 